Hello and welcome to the Maths 2 component of the online BSc program on data science and programming. In this video, we are going to study the notion of partial derivatives. So, we have seen functions of several variables and now partial derivatives corresponds to the notion of the rate of change of a function of several variables according to one variable. So, with respect to one variable. So, we will study this in this video. So, let us recall first the idea of the rate of change and derivatives from one variable calculus. So, to calculate instantaneous speed at some time, we have to compute the distance travelled in a very short period of time and divide by that by the time period uh, and that, that should be a close approximation of the instantaneous speed. So, this was something that we studied in uh, when we introduced the notion of derivatives in one variable calculus. In particular, we had this example of a truck travelling from um, uh, Punjab to Tamil Nadu and uh, 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 based on that example, we extrapolated what, what the correct definitions should be. So, ideally one should take uh, this time interval as small as possible that was the main content of uh, that example uh, and uh, we move towards this idea of an infinitesimal time and what is an infinitesimal time that is just a limit. So, based on this we reach the following conclusion that infinitesimal speed is the limit as delta t tends to 0 where delta t is the uh, length of the time interval uh, distance travelled in that time delta t divided by delta t. So, um, of course, here uh, we have to st start talking about units. So, if we want kilometers per second we want to measure it in kilometers per second, we have to measure delta t in seconds and the distance in kilometers. Okay. So, this led us to the general notion of a derivative uh, which captured the rate of change. So, let f of x be a function of one variable defined on an open interval around a, then f is differentiable at a if limit h tends to 0 f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h exists and in that case the obtained limit is called f prime of a and then out of this f prime we made a function. So, if we do this for each a which is in the domain of f and for those ones for which it exists this limit exists uh, we define the derivative function f prime. So, you collect together all those points a for which uh, f prime a makes sense and then you define this function f prime from that set to r. So, we want to do something similar now for functions of several variables. So, the obtained function f prime x is called the derivative function of x, f of x and we want to do the same thing now for uh, functions of several variables with respect to each variable. Okay. So, let us fix some notation before we go ahead. So, from here on uh, in this video at least and uh, possibly in several of the next videos unless specifically mentioned otherwise a function will mean a scalar valued multivariable function. So, we have seen earlier the difference between scalar valued and vector valued multivariable functions. So, scalar valued multivariable functions are those such that you have the domain which is the domain in R n where n is greater than 1 and the range is in R. So, the co domain is R. Okay. One more thing that uh, we should uh, know if a tilde is a point in R n then an open ball of radius r around a tilde is the set defined as x tilde in r n such that the distance between x tilde and a tilde is less than r. So, if you think of this in r 2 what this means is you have a uh, disc of radius r around the point a. Yeah, at, so, that means you draw a circle of uh, radius r around that point a tilde and then um, uh, it is all those points that are within that circle. Okay. So, and the final thing that uh, one has to remember is that E 1, E 2, E n is the standard ordered basis of R n. Okay. So, this was something we studied in the linear algebra part. So, we will have some use for this for the standard basis vectors in what is coming next. Fine. So, let us talk about the rate of change with respect to a particular variable at a point. So, what we want to do is we want to ask sup, suppose I have a function of several variables f of x 1, x 2, x n and I want to ask well how does this function behave at the point some fixed point a tilde 
when x 1 varies. Okay. So, we, we keep everything else fixed and just vary x 1 and ask how does it behave, how is the behavior of the function around this point. And in particular we want to ask how does the function change, is it does it change fast, is, does it change slowly. So, uh, this is sort of similar to saying what is the instantaneous speed as you change x 1. So, we can do this with any particular variable and uh, that is what we will study now. So, let f of x 1, x 2, x n be a function defined on the domain d in R n containing a point a tilde and an open ball around it. So, when we say open ball around it that means for some positive radius. Then the rate of change of f at a tilde with respect to the variable x i and uh, this is important that it is with respect to the variable x i is limit as h tends to 0 f of a tilde plus h times e i minus f of a tilde divided by h. So, this is very similar to the notion of the derivative that we saw for the single variable functions and uh, in fact, uh, uh, I am going to sort of uh, in a second say that it is actually the same thing, there is an underlying single variable function and that is that is what I will describe now. So, let us uh, explicitly work out what this means. So, if a tilde has uh, coordinates a 1, a 2, a n, we know that E i means the standard basis vector with uh, zeros everywhere except in the ith place. So, this is the ith place and you have zeros everywhere else. So, let us unravel what this definition means. So, what this is saying is that you have f of a 1, a 2, a n plus h times uh, 0 all the way till the ith 1 which is 1 and then all the zeros again minus f of a 1 a 2 a n. And then this divided by h and then limit as h tends to 0. So, if you if you work out what this is, this is exactly f of a 1. So, we can add these two vectors. So, a 1 a 2 n plus h times e i. So, there will be no change in the other coordinates. So, all those remain the same. So, up to i minus 1 and then in the ith one you have a i plus h and then you have you go all the way up to a n and then this minus again f of a 1 a 2 a n divided by h. So, as you can see really what is happening is that only the i th coordinate is changing everything else is remaining the same. So, what what we are really saying is let us define a new function let us uh, maybe call it uh, g and what is this new function? This new function is g of uh, h is equal to f of a tilde plus h times e i. Then uh, what what we are asking and now remember that this is a function of one variable. So, g is a function of one variable this is the important point g is a function of one variable because h is just a uh, number it is a real number right. So, this h is a real number everything else in here they are vectors. So, a tilde is a vector e i is a vector, but h is a real number. So, you are doing h times e i. So, scalar times that vector e i. Okay. So, g is a function of h which means g is a function of one variable and now uh, what this limit translates to is g of h because that is exactly what this is minus g of 0 divided by h limit as h tends to 0. Right? g of 0 is exactly g, uh, f of a tilde which is what we, we are subtracting from g of h. So, this is computing the derivative of the function g at the uh, point 0 that is that is what is happening. So, really uh, uh, this limit is or this rate of change with respect to a variable x i is saying let us forget all the other variables let us concentrate only on x i and let us vary x i and treat that alone as a function and see what happens okay? and then compute its derivative. So, because rate of change is derivative of that function. So, rate of change with respect to that variable is the derivative of g. 
Okay, so, I hope this is clear we will see pictures of this uh, in a few minutes. So, let us uh, do, do a couple of computations uh, before we see the pictures. So, the rate of change of f of x y x comma y is x plus y at 0 0 with respect to x let us compute this. So, what do I want to do I want to compute um, with respect to x. So, I should take E 1 right. So, this is at 0 0 f of 0 0 plus h times 1 0 minus f of 0 0 divided by h limit h tends to 0. And what is that? That is exactly f of. So, if I add these this is f of h comma 0 minus f of 0 comma 0 divided by h. Well, f of h comma 0 is h plus 0. So, that is h f of 0 comma 0 is 0 and then divided by h. So, this is of very familiar limit now. So, this is going to be 1. So, this is the function 1. So, this limit will be 1 as h tends to 0. Okay. So, this is this will reduce down to our good old limits that we have seen earlier in calculus uh, single variable calculus. Okay, Let us do another example. So, the rate of change of f of x y z at 1 2 3 with respect to y. Okay. So, let us compute this. So, this is limit h tends to 0 uh, f of uh, 1 2 3 plus h times this is with respect to y. So, 0 comma 1 comma 0 minus f of 1 2 3 divided by h. Okay, so, what that means is you get f of 1 comma uh, so limit h tends to 0 uh, f of 1 comma um, 2 plus h comma 3 minus f of 1 comma 2 comma 3 divided by h. Let us find out what those values are. So, the f of 1 comma 2 plus h comma 3 is um, uh, 1 times 2 plus h uh, plus 2 plus h times 3 plus 1 times 3 and then minus 1 times 2 minus 2 times 3 minus uh, ah, I put a bracket unnecessarily okay, minus 1 times 3 right this is this is uh, uh, what the expression in the numerator is and I should put my limit divided by h. So, this gives us uh, so 1 times 3 and 1 times 3 cancel uh, and then you have 1 times 2 plus h. So, the 1 times 2 cancels and the 2 times 3 cancels and then what you are left with is uh, 1 times h which is h plus 3 times h divided by h. So, this is going to be 4 right. So, 4 h by h which is 4 and then uh, the limit no longer matters. So, this gives us 4 uh, and this computation is important keep keep track of what happened here. Um, Right. Let us do this final example. So, the rate of change of f of x y is sin of x y at 1 comma 0 with respect to x. Uh, okay. So, let us see what that is. So, we have limit h tends to 0 sin of um, ah, my bad. Let us write down the expression first. So, f of uh, 1 comma 0 which is the point plus h times uh, it is with respect to x. So, this is h times 1 comma 0 minus f of 1 comma 0 divided by h. So, let us see what this evaluates to. So, the first term gives us um, uh, f of uh, 1 plus h comma 0 and then minus f of 1 comma 0 divided by h. So, now if we substitute the uh, equation uh, sorry the function uh, sin of x y. So, this is sin of 1 plus h times 0. So, this is sin of 0 which is just 0 and uh, then this is again sin of 1 times 0 again 0 and divided by h. So, this is going to be 0. Okay. So, this is going to be the limit 
with respect to x. Suppose now I want this with respect to y. Okay, just for practice, let's see what it is with respect to y. Okay, so I can do the same thing, except now I have one comma zero plus h times zero comma one. Then f of one comma zero divided by h. So I'll move directly to the last step where we get limit h tends to zero. So f of one comma h. So which is sine of h, and then minus zero, and then divided by h. Aha! This is a very familiar limit. So limit h tends to zero sine of h by h, and we know this is one. Okay. So the point here is that all of these reduce to very nice limits that we have computed earlier. We have calculated earlier in one variable calculus. So this is not something very different from what we have seen earlier. Okay. So now let's. Uh, Uh, look at the pictures uh, for some of uh, some of these uh, functions and see if we can interpret uh, what we are doing so let's look at the function f of xy is x plus y and uh, we were computing the limit uh, or the rate of change of this function uh, at 0 0 with respect to the uh, uh, variable x right so for this uh, let's look at the function first of all how does this function look like so this is a graph of that function f of xy is x plus y so the red line is your x axis the green line is your uh, y axis and uh, in terms of what we discussed um, when we have to do this with respect to x we want to study the rate of change with respect to x that means we are really and at the point 0 0 that means we are uh, interested in asking that uh, along the x axis that's where y is constant and uh, x is changing Uh, we want to ask on top of that how does this function behave so of course we can substitute y zero and then we know that the function g that we talked about g of uh, x is just x because you get x plus zero okay and in terms of pictures what that means is you take this graph of f of x y and then you look at the plane y zero that's the part above the x axis and then you look at the intersection. right and that is exactly the graph of the function that you obtain when you restrict this function only to the x axis so what what we get in that case is this line that that we have here so if i uh, now take out these two yeah you can see this and this is indeed the line uh, uh, and this is a graph of the function g of x is equal to x and so we are asking what is the derivative of this uh, of this function that's what that um, limit computed uh, at zero okay so uh, similarly we did one more example that was the example of the function sin of xy and uh, so let's look at the graph of that function ah oh, this is a really interesting graph we wanted to look at uh, the point 1 comma 0 and we computed the par, uh, the rates of changes Uh, with respect to x and with respect to y so uh, with respect to x that means i have to uh, look at the plane y0 so if you look at the plane y0 this is what you get and we should intersect those so if we intersect those here is what we get so let me uh, knock out these two and you will immediately see what what we get well what we got actually is this line why is that because for y is 0 uh the function actually is the zero function right so that's why we are uh, we get a uh we get just the graph of the zero function and uh, at 1 comma 0 which is over here uh, the for derivative is zero as a result instead now let's look at the what happens when we compute this with respect to y so when we do it with respect to y well let's look back at look at our function again so this is the graph of the function so when we want to do this at at uh, uh, y uh, with respect to y then we should um, uh, intersect this with the uh, plane x is 1 so here is the plane x is 1 and uh, so now when we intersect here's what we get so let me remove 
the plane axis. Oh, let me remove the graph first. Ha, and now you can see on that plane we have this very nice function. This is actually the sine function, right? So on on the plane x is 1, uh, this is actually the sine function and so we are computing the uh, derivative with respect to the sine function at the point 0 and indeed that is 1, uh, that is something we know. So, this is the this is what, what is really happening, this is what we mean by uh, rate of change graphically. Okay, so, now that we have understood the rate of change both in, in terms of the algebra where we actually computed the limits and in terms of the geometry where we saw those pictures, let us continue and uh, talk about partial derivatives. So, partial derivatives are basically the function that you obtain by taking these limits at various points. Okay, so, let f of x 1, x 2, x n be a function defined on the domain d in R n. The partial derivative of f with respect to x i is the function denoted by f subscript x i or del f del x i. So, this uh, this uh, symbol which looks like a weirdly shaped d is called del. So, del f by del x i and what is the definition? Del f by del x i at the at x tilde is limit x h tends to 0 f of x tilde plus a h times e i minus f of x tilde divided by h. Remember that we are doing this with respect to the uh, i th variable. So, we have to do f of x tilde plus h times e i okay, which means we have to do uh, f of x 1, x 2 all the way up to x i minus 1, x i plus h again x i plus 1 up to x n minus f of x 1, x 2, x n divided by h and then take the limit as h tends to 0. So, it is like we are we are fixing all the other uh, variables and we are allowing the ith variable to uh, change. So, this is the uh, definition of the uh, partial derivative, this is a function and uh, what that means is this is a scalar valued multivariable function because it takes as input uh, something from R n and it produces as output some number which is this limit. Now, of course, it may happen that uh, this, this limit does not exist everywhere. So, the domain of these functions will consist of those points of d at which the limits do exist. Okay, so, uh, let us uh, do this example. So, for this example, I want to compute what is the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. Uh, so, del f del x and del f del y. So, let us start by asking what is the definition. So, if I want to compute del f del x of x comma y, by definition this is limit h tends to 0 f of x comma y plus h times uh, 1 comma 0, y 1 comma 0 because this is with respect to x minus f of x comma y divided by h. Well, if I compute this limit, so this is x plus h comma y minus f of x comma y divided by h and uh, now it is an easy computation where you uh, uh, put in the values, um, the expressions for the function. So, x plus h plus y minus x plus y divided by h and uh, it is it is clear that this is h by h which is 1. Okay. So, this is the uh, derivative, the partial derivative of the function f of x y is x plus y uh, uh, with respect to x. Okay. So, this is the function 1. So, the partial derivative of f with respect to x is 1 for this particular function. Okay. By symmetry, I think you can see that uh, for y also you will get the same thing, but just for the sake of completeness, let me compute this. So, this is limit h tends to 0 and I am going to skip to the last step now. So, this is x, x comma y plus h minus f of x comma y, figure out why that is the case. And now, if you substitute in the um, expressions, again you get x plus y plus h minus x plus y divided by h and this is going to be 1. Okay, so, um, so, both the partial derivatives for this function are 1 and you can see what we are doing here. We are we are really holding each variable constant 
uh, for which uh, we are not computing the partial derivative and for the one with, with respect to which we are computing it, we are adding an h then evaluating the function subtracting out the uh, f of x 1 x 2 x n and then taking dividing by h and taking the limit. Okay. So, um, if your functions are nice then there is a very nice way of uh, doing this. So, to calculate the partial derivative with respect to x i think of f only as a function of x i while treating all the other variables as constants okay, because that is really what, what, what we were doing here. Then calculate it as the derivative of a function of one variable right this is this is exactly the game plan. Okay, so, let us do these two examples and now I am going to do it really fast no more limits. Okay. So, del f del x of x y z. Okay. So, I am going to think of y z as constants. Okay. So, suppose instead of uh, uh, x y plus y z plus z x, suppose I had uh, x times 3 plus uh, 20 plus 18 times x what would you have computed this derivative as? You would have said derivative of this part is 3, derivative of this, this part is 0 and derivative of this part is 18. right? This is exactly what you should do here. So, here treat y as a constant. So, what you get is uh, the, the derivative with respect to x for the term x times y is y. The derivative for the term y times z is 0 because y and z are being treated as constants the derivative for the term z times x is z because that is like constant times x what is that constant z. So, this is y plus z. Okay. Similarly, if you do del f del y uh, you would get um, x plus z and del f del z x y z is x plus uh, y. Okay. And I'll I'll uh, suggest that you you do the limits and see that this is exactly what you get. Okay, I, okay. Let's do this uh, example of f of x y is sine of x y. So we did this when um, uh, at the point one comma zero. So let's now do it for for any point. So if you do it for any point, what you get is uh, del f del x of x comma y. Okay, so, this is like a composition of functions right. So, this is sin of so, suppose this was like sin of 3 x right. What would you have computed the limit as uh, sorry the derivative as you would have computed it as cosine of 3 x multiplied by 3 right. This is exactly what you should do here. So, this is cosine of x y multiplied by y. So, I will write it as y times cosine of x y. And similarly, if you take del f del y, this is x times cosine of x y. Okay, so you you do your limits and check that this is exactly what you get, and and uh, you'll see that this is partial derivatives are actually quite easy. It's very much like your uh, usual one variable calculus derivative. Okay, I'll end with uh, one one example where suppose your function is not defined uh, in a nice way, meaning it's piecewise defined like this one is. So, in that case uh, you might have to actually compute those limits because uh, there uh, you cannot use the previous rules that we have from one variable calculus. So, even in one variable calculus remember that if your function was not uh, some nice function then you had to actually compute the limits. So, this is what what uh, is happening here. So, uh, so first suppose x y is uh, not 0 0 right. So, I want to compute x y is not 0 0 uh, what is uh, del f del f del x uh, x y and del f del y x y. So, del f del x x y for such a point is just the usual the usual rule right. So, this is a um, suppose you had a function like 3 x by x squared plus 4, think of how you would have computed the derivative and do it according to that. Okay. So, this is going to be uh, the u divided by b v rule. Um, so, this is uh, uh, x squared plus y squared times uh, derivative of x y with respect to x that is y 
माइनस एक्स वाई टाइम्स डेरिवेटिव ऑफ एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस वाई स्क्वायर विच इज टू एक्स रिमेंबर दैट आई एम डूइंग व्हेन आई एम डूइंग सेइंग डेरिवेटिव ऑफ एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस वाई स्क्वायर आई एम डूइंग इट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स विद द आइडिया दैट वाई इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट एंड देन डिवाइडेड बाय द डिनोमिनेटर स्क्वायर ओके एंड यू कैन प्रॉब्ली सिंप्लीफाई दिस एंड या सो यू हैव एक्स स्क्वायर वाई प्लस वाई क्यूब माइनस टू एक्स स्क्वायर वाई सो वाई क्यूब माइनस एक्स स्क्वायर वाई डिवाइडेड बाई एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस वाई स्क्वायर स्क्वायर ओके एंड देन सिमिलरली आई द बाई सिमेट्री और इफ यू कंप्यूट इट यू गोइंग टू गेट द सेम थिंग फॉर द सेम टाइप ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन फॉर डेल एफ डेल वाई एंड दिस इज बोथ ऑफ दीज आर इन द केस वेर एक्स वाई इज नॉट द पॉइंट जीरो जीरो सो हियर आई कैन कंप्यूट लिमिट्स विथ इम्प्यूनिटी नो प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज आई कैन अप्लाई माई यू डिवाइडेड बाई वी रूल एट जीरो जीरो आई हैव टू बी केयरफुल बिकॉज नाउ द डेफिनेशन इज वेरी स्पेसिफिक सो लेट सी वॉट हैपन्स टू एक्स वाई एट जीरो जीरो सो सपोज एक्स वाई जीरो जीरो वॉट इज डेल एफ डेल एक्स एट जीरो जीरो डेल एफ डेल वाई एट जीरो जीरो सो टू डू दैट हैव टू कंप्यूट दिस बाय फ्रॉम फर्स्ट प्रिंसिपल्स बाय हैंड सो दिस इज एफ ऑफ एच कॉमा जीरो माइनस एफ ऑफ जीरो कॉमा जीरो डिवाइडेड बाय एच लिमिट एज एच टेंस टू जीरो सो आई एम आई एम डूइंग दिस फ्रॉम फर्स्ट प्रिंसिपल्स बट आई एम डूइंग इट स्लाइटली फास्टर सो एफ ऑफ एच कॉमा जीरो वॉट इज दैट वेल इफ एच इज रिमेंबर दैट एच इज नॉन जीरो सो इफ यू सब्सिट्यूट एच कॉमा जीरो इन इन दिस एक्सप्रेशन वेल यू गेट जीरो इन द न्यूमरेटर माइनस जीरो एंड देन डिवाइडेड बाय एच हाउ डिड आई गेट द सेकेंड जीरो बिकॉज एफ ऑफ जीरो कॉमा जीरो इज डिफाइंड टू बी जीरो एट जीरो जीरो सो दिस इज जस्ट जीरो एंड द सेम अगेन बाई सिमेट्री और इफ यू कंप्यूट दिस यू विल गेट दैट दिस इज ऑल्सो जीरो सो फॉर द पॉइंट जीरो जीरो यू हैव टू बी केयरफुल एंड डू इट बाई हैंड फॉर दी अदर पॉइंट वी आर वी आर गुड टू गो सो इन दिस वीडियो वी हैव टॉक्ट अबाउट द पार्शल डेरिवेटिव सो बेसिकली दोज स्टडी द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ the function with respect to a particular variable that means when we are looking at the uh, in the direction of the x axis or the y axis so of course if your point is not on the x or the y axis you have to move your uh, axis parallelly so if your point is uh, has coordinates a1 a2 an uh, we are looking at the uh, uh, and you want to say i want to do it with respect to x1 so you have to keep all the other things constant so you have to look at the Uh, uh at the line which is uh, parallel to the x axis uh which is given by um x2 is a2 x3 is a3 all the way up to xn is n so of course in two or three variables this is easily done and um uh, so you you look at the function there which becomes a function of one variable and then you take your usual derivative and that is exactly how you compute the partial derivative thank you